I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Do you have an aversion to wealth? Do you object to being rich? Are you turned off by abundance? If so, you do not believe in God, because God is omnipresent wealth, the infinite riches of the universe, the lavish abundance of creation. And if you deny unlimited prosperity, you are denying yourself, because you are the image of omnipresent wealth, the expression of the infinite riches of the universe and individualization of lavish abundance. Right now, you are as rich as any individual who ever walked on this planet. The cattle on a thousand hills are yours, the gold and silver are yours, and wonderful, warm, living, loving money is yours. Just because you may not be aware of this doesn't change the fact. Again, why are you so rich? Because God is, and it is His will for you, His expression, to be abundantly supplied with His lavish abundance of all good, because you are His will made manifest. And if you don't believe that God loves prosperity, just take a good look at your Bible. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. And they shall prosper that love thee, Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having an all-sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. And there are many other references. Now someone may say, but what about the the statement that the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, try that one on a super being, and he or she will tell you that in Greek, the common written language in Jesus' time, there are five words that translate into English simply as love, and that this statement should read that it is the worship of money that is the root of all evil. Well, we're not here to worship money but we are here to worship the source of all money, and that's the consciousness that produces it. We're going to love and adore and worship the cause, and we're simply going to use the effect to make our lives feel more whole and more complete and more harmonious. Also understand that the word wealth can be traced back to a word meaning good, so your wealth is your good whatever you conceive it to be. At this point, let's agree that it is the will of God for each one of us to be wealthy, if for no other reason than because God is the infinite wealth of the universe, and we are that wealth individualized. It has been said that God is always one, not a divided against itself, and he can never know anything unlike himself, so God knows only abundance and has no conception whatsoever of lack. Before we get into the specific principles of abundance, let's do our part now to clean out some of the old patterns that we're holding in consciousness. Remember that Jesus said to first cleanse the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside also may be clean. He was saying that if you want to change an outer condition, you must first change the inner condition. And as students of truth, you know that nothing has ever happened to you, that no one has ever done anything to you without you first having accepted the negative situation or experience as belonging to you. So let's put the blame where it ought to be. 
For example, if you've experienced a shortage of money in your life, it is because you accepted a belief in lack and a belief in limitation. You have accepted the falsehood that lack is a normal part of your life. Now, isn't that ridiculous? And then we run around trying to fill up that lack. We try to get money, to get wealth, to get abundance, and all the time we're putting the cart before the horse. The consciousness of abundance must come before the physical manifestation of abundance, not afterward. Wealth is the result of consciousness, not the cause of it. What we are speaks so loudly that sometimes we can't hear ourselves think. We are constantly outpicturing that which we believe we are. And while experiencing lack in some form in our lives, we may say that we have faith in God or that we expect a miracle today. And we may be almost able to convince ourselves that the all good is indeed coming our way. But an objective examination of the deep private side that we keep hidden from the world would bring to light those old patterns of fear and doubt and our acceptance of lack as a natural state of our being. In talking to a truly evolved soul not long ago about this problem of being honest about what we really feel and believe, he suggested an exercise that was practiced thousands of years ago to determine what darkness was lurking in deeper consciousness. The concept is based on thought and energy transference to an inanimate object. In essence, giving that object life and letting it tell you of itself. In modern terms, we would say that we are conveying our subconscious beliefs about that object to the object and letting it become conscious of itself as our subconscious thinking. Let's do that now with our money pull out a bill of any denomination with the understanding that it represents all the money you have ever had up to this point in your life. Also understand that this visible money is directly attached in substance to your consciousness of money. And since it is still within your consciousness, it should be able to tell you something about yourself. For this exercise, Please sit up straight and get very relaxed now. Close your eyes for a moment and release every pressing thought. Let go all concerns and get yourself open and receptive to hear and to understand what you hear. Now hold the bill in your hand and focus on it intently. Just stare at that bill you're holding in your hand and silently tell it that you recognize it to be spirit substance in form. Just say, I recognize you to be spirit substance in form. Now tell it that it is alive and conscious of itself. Now silently tell it that you are now transferring your subconscious feelings and thoughts about money to it. Just say, I am now transferring my subconscious feelings and thoughts about money to you. And in your mind's eye, at this point, See a stream of energy flowing out of your solar plexus and totally saturating the bill. Either feel or see that stream of energy flowing out of your solar plexus area and totally saturating the bill. Now to help you open the channels of communication, I'm going to give you some questions to ask your money. You'll silently ask the question and listen to the immediate response. And I ask that you write those responses down. We're going to allow you a few seconds between questions 
So immediately write down what you hear. You can go back over this exercise later into greater depth. But let's practice now, listening to what the money says and recording the immediate response. Again, don't stop to analyze or evaluate what you hear or what comes through. Just write down the immediate response. So if you're ready, here's the first question to ask the bill that you're holding in your hand. How would you describe my attitude toward you? How would you describe my attitude toward you? Now listen. For the second question, ask the bill in your hand, do I fear you? And if so, why? Listen. The third question, have I ever abused you? And if so, how? Listen. For the next question, after we ask the question, you will see a number flashing in your mind. A number will flash on the screen of your mind, and that is the number that you'll record on paper. And this is the question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 the highest, how would you measure my integrity as it specifically relates to money? We'll repeat that question again. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you measure my integrity as it specifically relates to money? Now write the number down. The fifth question, do you feel that I am a responsible person regarding money? For the sixth question, let's ask an open-ended question so that your money can give you the answers to questions we haven't even thought of asking. You might want to turn the recorder off after this question and listen and write for a few minutes. This is the sixth question. What other information do you have for me regarding my feelings and attitudes toward money. Take a good look at the responses and you'll have an inside view of your hidden feelings. Now understand that as we move on in the discussion of the principles of abundance, any negative feelings will be transmuted through the positive energy of your new awareness, understanding, and knowledge of spiritual abundance. Now let's discuss those specific principles of abundance and prosperity. First of all, let's take another verse from the Bible. Let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Your Lord is the Spirit of God, the Christ, within you. You magnify this Master Self that you are in truth by realizing that you and God are one. All that this one presence and power of the universe is, you are. And all that this infinite mind has is yours. Above you, around you, in and through you, is you, the reality of you, an omnipotent force field embodying all love, all wisdom, all life, all substance, all all. This allness 
that is individualized as you is the same mind, the same spirit, the same presence who spoke to Moses from the burning bush, the one who spoke through Jesus. As your spirit expressed itself, your soul came forth into vibration, soul within spirit, as a circle within a circle. Your soul is your consciousness, and you once knew yourself to be a spiritual being. As a manifestation of your God self, you beheld yourself as the Son of the living God in individual expression, and your consciousness was filled with the pure awareness of the Christ, for that was the nature and purpose of your soul. Even now, eons later, there is a spark of that knowingness, that consciousness of truth still exists right now within your soul. It is your higher soul. But for the most part, your lower consciousness today is in a hypnotic state, caught in a warp of material illusion. You must now break the spell of the lower soul, of the lower mind, and let your God self work through you to bring peace within your walls and prosperity within your palaces that you may always have an all-sufficiency in all things. The self within, the Christ, the Spirit of God, the Master Consciousness, your higher self, whatever term is, is most comfortable for you, is forever thinking thoughts of abundance, which is its true nature. Since thoughts of lack or limitation can never be registered or entertained in this infinite mind, then the principle or the law of supply must be one of total and continuous all-sufficiency. Your self thinks, sees, and knows only abundance, and the creative energy of this mind of abundance is eternally flowing and radiating, expressing, seeking to appear as abundance on the physical plane. This radiating creative mind energy is substance. And as this divine thought energy flows through your consciousness and out into the phenomenal world to appear as prosperous experiences and conditions, its plastic quality allows it to be impressed by the tone and shape of your dominant beliefs. Therefore, what you see and hear and taste and touch and smell are your beliefs objectified. The form and the experience are but effects. They are but appearances, and we are told to not judge by appearances. To judge something means to believe it, to assume that it is true, to conclude that it is factual. But we are told not to do this. Why? Because what appears as an effect has no value in itself. The only attributes that an effect has are the ones that you give it. Now money is an effect. When you concentrate on the effect, you are forgetting the cause, and when you forget the cause, the effect begins to diminish. When you focus your attention on getting money, you are actually shutting off your supply. You must begin this very moment to cease believing that money is your substance, or your supply, or your support or your security, or your safety. Money is not, but God is. When you understand and realize this truth, the supply flows uninterrupted into perfect and abundant manifestation. You must look to God alone as the source and take your mind completely off the outer effect. If you look to your job, or your employer, your spouse, or your investments as the source of your supply, you are cutting off the real source. In fact, if you look 
to any human person, place, or condition for your supply, you are shutting down the flow. If you give power to any mortal as even being the channel for your supply, you are limiting your good. You must think of money and any other material desire or possession simply as an outer symbol of the inner supply. And the only reality of that symbol is the substance which underlies the outward manifestation. Money is the symbol of an idea in divine mind, as is every other good thing. The idea is an all-sufficiency of supply to meet every need with a divine surplus in your individual life. As the divine idea comes out into manifestation, it appears as the symbol. It appears as money. But the money is not the supply. Rather, it is your consciousness of God as your abundance that constitutes your supply. Let me repeat that again. It is your consciousness of God as your abundance that constitutes your supply. When you try to collect, acquire, and possess the symbol, in other words, focusing on the symbol and not the supply within, the outlet for the manifestation closes. Now, do you want more money, more prosperity in your life? Then shift from a consciousness of effects or materiality to a consciousness of cause or spirituality. When you give power to an effect, you are giving it your power. You are actually giving the effect power over you. Does money have power? If you say yes, then you have given it your power, and you have become the servant. You have reversed the roles. The inner presence, the you of you, is truly the money maker. Your thinking, reasoning mind is not. Your only source is the God presence within you. If your mind is on the source, if your mind is on the cause, the supply flows freely. If your mind is on the effect, you block the flow. The more impersonal you become regarding where your money seems to originate, the more personal you can become in your relationship with the true source of your money. And the closer the relationship to your God self, the greater the abundance in your life. Turn within and watch the inner presence work. The activity of that infinite mind, which is your infinite mind, sees and knows only abundance. And in this sea of knowingness is a spiritual idea corresponding to every single form event, circumstance, condition, or experience that you could possibly desire. The creative energy or the substance of these divine ideas is forever flowing into perfect manifestation. But remember, if you constantly look to the effect, the visible form, you will create a mutation, a less than perfect manifestation. But by keeping your focus on spirit, you will keep the channel open for the externalization of spirit according to the divine idea. The time must come when you will satisfy a need for money by steadfastly depending on that master self within you and not on anything in the outer world of form. Until you do this, you will continue to experience the uncertainties of supply for the rest of your life. Every soul must learn this lesson, and until it does, it will be given opportunity after opportunity in the form of apparent lack and limitation. Now you may be experiencing such a challenge right at this moment. Realize that this is the opportunity you have been waiting for 
to demonstrate the truth of your birthright. Know that this entire experience is but an illusion, an outpicturing of your beliefs, an effect of your consciousness. But you are going to stop this very moment giving any power to the illusion. You're going to stop giving any power to the effect. You're going to cease feeding it with negative energy. In fact, you are going to withdraw your energy from the outer scene and let it die. Let it fade back into the nothingness from which it came. I ask you, take your stand this day as a spiritual being and renounce all claims to humanhood and mortality. Care not what is going on in your world, regardless of your fears about your creditors, regardless of your fears about your security or your protection or your future. Thumb your nose at the effects. Wave goodbye to external false belief pictures and return to the Father's house where you have belonged ever since you left under the spell of materiality. Take your mind off money and material possessions and focus and concentrate only on the lavish abundance of divine substance that is forever flowing from that master consciousness within you. Take your stand and prove God now. Stop adding up your bills. Stop counting your money, the money you either have or the money you need, and stop looking for your supply from any mortal person, place, or situation. The whole universe is standing on tiptoes right now watching you, praying that you will let go of the negative appearances of this world, the world of illusion, and will claim your divine inheritance. Now is the time. Today is the day. Pass this test and you will never have to go through it again. But if you yield to mortal pressure and carnal mind temptation to get temporary financial relief from the world of effects, you will have to go back again to the classroom and learn the lesson all over again. Say to yourself with great feeling, this day, and speak the actual date, this day I cease believing in visible money as my supply and my support, and I view the world of effect as it truly is, simply an outpicturing of my former beliefs. I believed in the power of money. Therefore, I surrendered my God-given power and authority to an objectified belief. I believe in the possibility of lack, thus causing a separation in consciousness from the source of my supply. I believed in mortal man and carnal conditions, and through this faith gave man and conditions power over me. I believed in the mortal illusions created by the collective consciousness of error thoughts, and in doing so, I have limited the unlimited, but no more. This day I renounce my so-called humanhood and I claim my divine inheritance as a being of God. This day I acknowledge God and only God as my substance, my supply, and my support. Now we come to the 40-day prosperity program. It takes 40 days for consciousness to realize or develop a subjective comprehension of a truth. A break during the 40-day period releases the energy being built up around the idea. Therefore, there must be a definite commitment to faithfully follow this program each and every day for 40 days. And if you miss even one day, to start all over again and continue until you can go the full period with perfect continuity. Now here's the course of action. 
Establish a specific date to start your program, such as the beginning of a particular week. Then count out 40 days on your calendar and mark the completion date. Now I'm going to give you 10 statements of principle and ask that you listen to only one statement each day. This means that you will go through the entire program four times during the 40-day period. I ask you to listen to the daily statement in a meditative state of mind, focusing on each idea in the statement with great thoughtfulness and with great feeling, letting the ideas fill your consciousness. And then I suggest that you turn the tape recorder off after you have listened meditatively to the statement and then open your spiritual diary and record the thoughts that come to you. Be sure to do this daily. It's very important to write immediately following your meditative period. Write the thoughts that come to mind after meditating on each particular statement. Now here is the statement of principle for day one. God is lavish, unfailing abundance, the rich, omnipresent substance of the universe. This all-providing source of infinite prosperity is individualized as me, as my divine consciousness, the reality of me. Day two, my soul is the direct expression of this mastermind I am. And the purpose of my soul is to be conscious, to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. Day three, when I am conscious of the inner presence as my lavish abundance, and when I am conscious of the constant activity of this mind of infinite prosperity within me, my consciousness is filled with the light of truth. Day four, through my consciousness of my God self, the Christ within as my source, I draw into my mind and feeling nature the very substance of spirit. This substance is my supply, thus my consciousness of the presence of God within me is my supply. Day five, money is not my supply. No person, place, or condition is my supply. My awareness, understanding, and knowledge of the all-providing activity of the divine mind within me is my supply. My consciousness of this truth is unlimited. Therefore, my supply is unlimited. Day six. My inner supply instantly and constantly takes on form and experience 
according to my needs and desires. Therefore, as the principle of supply in action, it is impossible for me to have any needs or unfulfilled desires. Day 7. The divine consciousness that I am is forever expressing its true nature of abundance. This is its responsibility, not mine. My only responsibility is to be aware of this truth. Therefore, I am totally confident in letting go and letting God appear as the abundant all-sufficiency in my life and affairs. Day 8 My consciousness of the Spirit of God within me as my unlimited source is the divine power to restore the years the locusts have eaten, to make all things new, to lift me up to the high road of abundant prosperity. This awareness, understanding, and knowledge of spirit appears as every visible form and experience that I could possibly desire. Day 9. When I am aware of the God-Self within me as my total fulfillment, then I am totally fulfilled. I am now aware of this truth. I have found the secret of life, and I relax in the knowledge that the activity of divine abundance is eternally operating in my life. I simply have to be aware of the flow, the radiation of that creative energy which is continuously, easily, and effortlessly pouring forth from my divine consciousness. I am now aware. I am now in the flow. Day 10. I keep my mind and thoughts off this world, and I place my entire focus on God within as the only cause of my prosperity. I acknowledge the inner presence as the only activity in my financial affairs, as the substance of all things visible. I place my faith in the principle of abundance and action within me now. Based on the level of your consciousness, it may not take 40 days for you to have your demonstration. You may need only a slight adjustment for a major breakthrough, but start the program committed to the full period. Also, you may not be experiencing financial challenges at the present time, but I still strongly encourage you to participate in this program, and the reason is this. Your increased awareness and understanding and knowledge of spiritual prosperity will benefit everyone within the range of your consciousness. You may also have built your current financial picture on the sands of third-dimensional thinking, and if so, it's time to start inserting the solid concrete of spiritual truth for firm and lasting abundance. Now I would like to lead you through a meditative treatment for prosperity. This treatment should be used as a supplement to the 40-day plan. For example, I suggest you work with the daily statements and the follow-up writings in the morning then use this meditation in the evenings. 
As I go through the meditation, I'm going to focus on the meaning and significance of the words. So follow me carefully. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. Contemplate the idea, the meaning behind the words, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Think about this until you feel something within, the Spirit of God. Speak the word silently and watch the other thoughts that flow in to expand your thinking. The Spirit of God within me. Dwell on the meaning of within me. What does it mean to you? Let the idea of within roll around in your mind and in your feeling nature until you feel a degree of understanding. The Spirit of God within me is the source. What does source mean? It means the cause, the authority, the wellspring, the foundation. Visualize a fountain of all good within you. Get a feel for what it means to have a source of all you could possibly desire right within your consciousness. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance. Ponder the idea that your higher self cannot conceive of lack and limitation. Therefore, there is no reality to insufficiency. There is no duality in that infinite mind within you. It knows only all sufficiency. It knows only abundance. It knows only surplus. And this consciousness of infinite plenty is endless, limitless, boundless, measureless. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance. And the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. Pause just a moment and contemplate the action of that supermind within you, the activity of that knowingness. Generate a greater awareness of the power at work, the force and the movement of an all-knowing mind filled with thoughts of lavish abundance. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. Sense that divine purpose at work. Feel the very will of God, the cosmic urge to express, active in your world. Reflect on the word constantly and gain an understanding of what it means. It means unfailing, permanent, enduring. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. Pause again. Can't you just see those thoughts literally creating new conditions in your life with great divine imagination? 
this is the creative power of mind that can do all things and is doing all things right now. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. Feel the flow now of the power. Meditate on the idea that you are now a radiating center of the energy of abundance. See it in your mind's eye as the fullness of that energy moves out from you in every direction. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God self knows only lavish abundance. And the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. Pause again. Contemplate the idea of substance. Think of it as that which stands under and supports everything you can see in the visible world. Substance is an attribute of spirit. Therefore, it is inexhaustible. It is unlimited. It is infinite. There is always plenty of substance. So there will always be plenty of everything you could possibly desire. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God self knows only lavish abundance. And the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply. Pause again. Substance is the creative energy of God mind. Therefore, your supply comes forth from the very mind of God within you. Dwell on the loving givingness of that Spirit of God right where you are within you now. Feel it. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God self knows only lavish abundance and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply, and my supply flows forth in streams of plenty. Think about it. Niagara Falls could not hold a candle to this outpouring. See the torrent of creative, creating energy radiating from you and going before you to manifest as the fulfillment of every desire. Sit quietly in the flow and feel that radiation. Feel it. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God self knows only lavish abundance, 
and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply, and my supply flows forth in streams of plenty. I am rich in consciousness. Think about it. I am rich in consciousness. You are now conscious of the radiant abundance saturating your very being and you feel its richness. You feel rich. You are now one with the infinite abundance of the universe and you are that abundance in perfect expression and you know it. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply, and my supply flows forth in streams of plenty. I am rich in consciousness. I am rich in manifestation. Pause again. You now intuitively believe and know that the problem of supply has been solved because your feeling nature has responded to the truth of this meditation. Even before the supply becomes visible, you know you have it. It is yours. I am rich in manifestation. Feel it. Feel it. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply, and my supply flows forth in streams of plenty. I am rich in consciousness. I am rich in manifestation. My spirit is now appearing as my all-sufficiency. You close the thinking part of the meditation by returning once again to your source, acknowledging the truth with love, with joy, and with a heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. My spirit is now appearing as my all-sufficiency. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God, thank you so much. The Spirit of God within me is the source of my supply. My God Self knows only lavish abundance, and the activity of that knowingness is constantly at work in my life and affairs. The very creative thought energy of that mind of infinite prosperity continually radiates in and through me. This is the divine substance of all form. This substance is my supply, and my supply flows forth in streams of plenty. I am rich in consciousness. I am rich 
in manifestation. My spirit is now appearing as my all-sufficiency, and it is so, and it is done. In this state of consciousness, wait upon the Lord, remain still, listen, listen within, feel, keep your mind focused on the presence within, and let spirit work in and through you to move all the necessary mountains with perfect ease. Now let's review the 12 points of demonstrating prosperity as covered in the super beings. Number one, do not tell anyone that you are working on prosperity from a spiritual mental approach. If you do, you will break the connection and drain the power building up in and around your new mental equivalent. Secrecy is an absolute essential. Number two, understand that you're not trying to make anything happen. You are simply releasing the abundance that is already a part of your true nature. Eliminate all pressure and intensity. Let the substance flow into visibility and experience. Easy does it. Number three, as your good begins to materialize, don't get puffed up with spiritual pride. Remember, you are not doing the work. It is spiritual substance that is interpreting itself as the fulfillment of your desires, and you are but the channel for its outpouring. Number four, critical thoughts and feelings of fear will hold back your good, while a consciousness of love and a consciousness of trust will speed up the flow. Love is the fulfillment of the law, and faith is the energy that clears the channel. Number five, acknowledge the spirit within you as the one source of abundance, the one source of your supply. Look only to God for your prosperity. Number six, do not outline the way your good is to come forth. Let the Spirit surprise you with its delightful ways of showering you with abundance. Number seven, Recognize that it is the will of God for you to be wealthy. Understand that there is not anything that even resembles lack or limitation or poverty in His consciousness. You were born to be rich. You are the offspring of the infinite abundance of the universe. And number eight. Don't delay your demonstration by holding in mind the idea of receiving your good tomorrow. God works in the now. Now. Now is the accepted time. If you live always in the future, your prosperity will always be one day ahead of you. Number nine. Abundance in the physical world is an outpicturing of a prosperity consciousness. So work from within. The higher your consciousness, the greater your prosperity. As above, so below. As within, so without. Number 10. Gratitude and thanksgiving are vital ingredients in developing a prosperity consciousness. Nothing opens the door to the storehouse as quickly as a thankful heart. Number 11. You develop 
a prosperity consciousness by changing your mind, by replacing ideas of lack with ideas of abundance. So spend more time each day thinking about what you want rather than what you do not want. You do not want lack, so stop thinking about it. And number 12, keep your money circulating. If you hoard it for a rainy day, you may have to spend it all on an ark. To give you further assistance along the way, remember that there are four bodies that make up your individual being, the spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical bodies. The spiritual self, of course, is the center of the abundance activity. It is the divine consciousness that is constantly expressing from mind to manifestation its true nature of abundance. This Christ self is ever active, so we let it function according to principle. In working with the emotional body, the most efficient way is to constantly pour out the energy of unconditional love through our feeling nature, to love everyone without exception and with no strings attached. This is truly the fulfilling of the law of prosperity. Regarding the mental body, we use our thinking minds to remind ourselves of the truth that the principle of abundance is forever active within the I am of us. So we can say without hesitation or without reservation, I am abundance. I am abundance and we keep this thought fixed in our mind. Our work in living the law of prosperity on the physical plane deals primarily with giving so that the stream of substance is always flowing freely. Now this can be a real turnoff for some people. Let me give you an example. Jan and I grew up in the traditional churches and we were constantly hounded to give until it hurts. We were told that by supporting the church with our tithes, we could one, earn our place in heaven, and two, have a deduction on our tax return at the end of the year, thus covering all the bases. And later, when we moved into metaphysics, we understood tithing to be a fail-safe scheme to get rich quick. Now, based on the principles of abundance that we've just discussed, you can see that this approach to giving with the emphasis on the getting is not in keeping with the consciousness of abundance. In fact, giving to get pulls consciousness down from the spiritual level and plugs us right back into materiality. Let me explain it this way. If you tithe, and I really prefer the word sharing to tithing, as a mechanical and calculated method to please God, unload guilt, meet a sense of obligation, and play a bartering game with the law, no one benefits, not even the receiver. However, if you share your good with others out of a loving and giving consciousness, then watch out, because the law is going to overwhelm you with a pressed down and multiplied return, but always in direct relationship to the spirit in which the gift was given. Sharing from the heart with great joy and love will throw open the windows of heaven with a blast. But give with a cold, something I should do attitude, and you'll have to use a crowbar to pry the windows open. Now, Jan and I have experimented with the sharing concept for years. And let me give you what we've personally discovered. Number one, giving on the physical plane can be the fastest way known to man to get untracked from financial lack if it's done with overflowing love and joy and a sense of fun. And number two, the habit of giving regularly is simply a tool to help you develop a giving consciousness. Number three, it is difficult to develop a true giving consciousness if money is the only thing you have in the house. Don't forget to also give your love, 
your gratitude, your inspiration, your time, your energy, your goodwill, your very self.